off to our next topic, which is combustion analysis. And this is a topic, uh, it really is connected to something we just did in lecture, which is uh, finding the empirical formula. And the combustion analysis is really that, but it throws in a slight variation. On your typical empirical formula kind of problem, you're given the mass of all the different atoms, or maybe the percent mass of the different atoms. But when you have a combustion analysis, it's a little bit different. So let's first talk about what combustion is. Combustion is when you take an organic, that's something with carbons and hydrogens. I have it drawn kind of a reaction right here, CXHY. So something with carbons and hydrogens. Doesn't matter how many. And you react it with oxygen. And then you get a particular type of product, CO2 and water. So those two always tend to be uh, will always be in your products of a combustion reaction. So this is a reaction you'll want to know. We're going to keep using it throughout the chem series. You'll see it a lot. Well, here's the deal. Let's say you uh, are in a crime scene and you come upon an unknown substance, okay? But you can tell it's organic. So you can run this through a combustion analysis and uh, with a, an absorbent, you can measure the mass of CO2 and H2O that comes off of that. It's like, cool. Now I want to know the empirical formula and the molecular formula. Well, that's cool and everything, except you don't have the mass of carbon and hydrogen, which we would typically have to find the empirical formula. You have the mass of CO2 and water. Because of that, that makes the solving technique a little bit different. So if you want to, you can follow along either in the reader or the text in the combustion analysis section. But I want to talk you through the solving method so when we do this in class, you'll kind of follow along and get where we're going. So here's what you do. You're going to always start with the mass of CO2 and water. Okay, that's a typical given in this sort of problem. What do you need to do? Well, like most problems in this class, convert to moles of CO2 and water. And you'll see me do an example of that in class. Uh, it's just a basic, you need the molar mass, and you convert to moles of CO2 and water. Then, you need to convert to the moles of carbon and the moles of hydrogen. Alright, and how do you do that? Well, there's one mole of CO2 for every mole of carbon, and there's two moles, or there's one mole of H2O for every two moles of H. Why is that? Because there's two hydrogens in water. And you'll see me do that calculation. Now, in a lot of questions we've done in class, we usually, again, don't have to do these first two steps because we start with the moles of the mass of, of the atoms. Now, there's an important question you have to ask yourself at that point. Is oxygen present in the original molecule? If no, you kind of, uh, the problem is soon solved. <laughs> because if there's no oxygen, you know that your empirical formula will be CXHY, or there's only carbon and hydrogen present, and you, you, you divide by the smallest. What law is that? That's the law of multiple proportions. You divide by the smallest number to make X and Y whole numbers, you're done. You have the empirical formula at this point. But what if, Either you know oxygen is present, yes, or maybe you're unsure. If oxygen is present, or even if you're not sure it's present, but it could be present, you have to go through this part of the flow chart right here. Okay, how does that work? You're going to take the moles of carbon and hydrogen, use their uh, atomic masses from the periodic table, and find the mass of carbon and the mass of hydrogen. Okay, so you get the mass of carbon, mass of hydrogen. Then you're going to use the law of conservation of mass that, uh, in a sense, the mass of the total is equal to the sum of the masses. What does that mean? The total mass of the organic compound, or the unknown compound that you come upon on your crime scene, is equal to the sum of the masses of each uh, element in it. So the mass of carbon plus the mass of hydrogen plus the mass of oxygen. In a typical problem, you're given this total mass. So if you're given the total mass, I'll put a little check mark on there, check, 
and you've just found the masses of carbon and the masses of hydrogen right here, then what you're going to do next is find the mass of oxygen. Okay, so you solve for the mass of oxygen. After that, you want to convert to the moles of oxygen. So you're going to convert to the moles of oxygen right here. Just use the atomic mass in the periodic table, 15.99 grams per mole. And now, here's what you have. You have this empirical formula because there's, uh, see, there's carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And just to clarify here, the moles of oxygen is Z. The moles of carbon, that's X, and the moles of hydrogen, that's Y. So really the subscripts, X, Y, and Z, remember are just moles. So these two, that's true right here, that there's X and Y, but in case there's a Z or there's oxygen, then you'll have to find the moles of oxygen, that's Z. Uh, and so you have C, X, H, Y, O, Z. And just like before, you divide by the smallest because of the law of multiple proportions because you want to make x, y, and z whole numbers. So this is the process you go through if there is oxygen. Now you might be asking, well, what if we were unsure if there was oxygen? How did this method help us? Here's how it helped us. Let's say you were unsure that there was oxygen. How would you know if there was or was not by going through this process? Well. If you solve for the mass of oxygen and you get a really small number, so compared to the mass of carbon and hydrogen, the mass of oxygen is really, really small, maybe 10 or 100 times or more smaller, then essentially there's no oxygen. Okay? You just get, you're just getting uh, uh, insignificant figures basically out of error, uh, calculation error. So if you get a number basically near zero or much, much smaller than the mass of carbon and hydrogen, really there's no oxygen, okay? And so that's how you can demonstrate there's no oxygen. However, if you get a mass of oxygen, and it's somewhat similar to the mass of carbon and hydrogen, at least within a factor of 10 or so, then you know there's oxygen for sure. Uh, and so that's how you demonstrate it. You really demonstrate it by this formula right here. Again, if the mass of oxygen is comparable to the mass of carbon and hydrogen, you know you have it. If the mass of oxygen is really, really small, essentially there's no oxygen and you just drop the oxygen again or you're going through this part of the flow chart here on the right hand side. And there we go. That's combustion analysis and that's how you can figure out what the empirical formula is from this method, which is really cool because when you come upon something, all you have to do is run it through this combustion analysis chamber, find the mass of CO2 and water, and from there, you can just follow this flowchart. You can figure out what that mystery compound is.